Sign up today for a seven-day free trial at alerts.chartguys.com. Hello, crypto friends. Checking back in, we're going to go over Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, ETH, BTC, XRP, ADA, and Binance. Actually, we're going to look at BCHSV as well, as there is opportunity when there is volatility, regardless of what your opinions are. We're here to trade. So we'll look at that as well. So we'll start off with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, what we're looking at is two scenarios. As we are starting on the daily time frame, we have our range, the high of the bull move, the low of the initial consolidation. The question is, are we going to see a bull break of 54.88 and get continuation? Or are we going to reject and need to pull back and establish a new daily support level? For me, the four hour uptrend is the most clear time frame to be watching to help us answer this question. We have a clear uptrend with higher lows and higher highs that have been intact for a couple days at this point. We're holding the exponential support the 12 period on the four hour time frame, and we can see just higher lows. Our most recent higher low is 52.22, and our resistance right here is 53.05. And if we zoom in, we can see that there's been a battle today between these levels. You see these upper wicks. It's a scenario where the bulls go for the break, they get knocked back down by the bears. But what you're seeing is resiliency from these bulls. They are getting knocked down, but they're picking themselves right back up. And here we are still testing these resistances heading up towards 5,300. So if we lose the four hour uptrend, we will zoom out to the daily chart and we will say, all right, our daily lower high is set compared to 5,488. And now we have to back test the daily exponential support again. So the bulls are in control because we're holding the four hour exponential and the daily exponential and riding uptrends on both. But if we lose it on the four hour, we have to see, can we hold it on the daily? If we keep the four hour uptrend into tomorrow, we're going to be knocking on the door of 54.88 as we head into the weekend. ETH is stepping up recently in terms of its strength. Look at this inside bar bull break. Look at this resistance clear and getting over 169.76 opened things up for the bulls and they saw a nice follow through. So daily inside bar bull break occurred and looking at it on the four hour time frame, we can just see a little bit of a double top, really actually a little bit of a triple top in that area. Healthy bull flag, back testing and holding exponential support. The bull cross of the exponential moving averages, continuation, another bull flag, little two bull flags in a row on the four hour time frame. So, four hour support is here at 170.39. And it's a little bit of a different setup, but same story in the sense that we have our high of the bull move and our low of the pullback at this point. The question is can we break 187.62? Or are we going to form a daily lower high compared to that level and need to come back for a higher low? This move is coming off the low of consolidation at this point. So the bulls are a little bit extended. The four hour RSI is approaching 70. The hourly RSI is already above 70. So if we lose the four hour uptrend, tightening daily range. And if we do not, we're looking up towards resistance. So ETH has stood out against Bitcoin over the past 24 hours or so. And we have to keep an eye on this ETH BTC weekly chart. And I like the weekly chart because of its clarity, where we have our high, low of the pullback, lower high, higher low. And we were coming down towards support really weak before this bounce started. And this bounce is taking place today in a big way. So we defended weekly support of this pattern. And now we're going to be looking, can we make our way back into the middle of this range and keep it tightening? So essentially, this is a guide for us to look at ETH as a potential bear when we approach resistance, which has happened twice on the weekly. Or look for ETH bullish. If there's a setup bullish on Bitcoin, look for ETH instead of BTC as we're heading down to the support, anticipating that the bulls will hold that support, which is exactly what happened this last time around. So if you're determining which individual name do I want to play, as far as ETH and BTC goes, it's pretty clear with this weekly pattern to use as a bit of a guide. And it's still going to be a bit of a coin flip as to whether or not you choose the right name that's going to be stronger in a certain short period of time. But we can tilt those odds in our favor, so it's certainly not a coin flip if we're using this chart as our guide and looking in the direction that this chart dictates. Litecoin is still really tight. The bulls have to break 84.73 to create some space. We've been trading within this range for seven days now, so we don't have that bull break yet. And I haven't looked at the LTC BTC chart yet, but I know that if I do, we're not going to see anywhere near as much bullish action as we have seen on Ethereum. So a little bit of catch up today, but still a downtrend. If LTC BTC can change this daily chart, hold this support of 1.5 and break 1.637, then we're going to see Litecoin likely 
break over its key 8473 resistance into some space. So the daily time frame is a completely different setup here on Litecoin than the other names. And essentially, we're watching the four hour uptrend as well. But if it pulls back, well, I guess we can look at it on a mini version. We're not looking at the whole move as our range like we are in Bitcoin. We're just going to zoom into the last seven days. If we lose the four hour uptrend from here, we're going to reject from resistance and fall back into this tight $10 range. That's actually not tight. It's a bit deceiving because of how big the move was. But if we lose the four hour uptrend, we're going to stay in this tight pattern and look for a daily higher low compared to 74.87. And if we keep the four hour uptrend, we're going to be heading to that resistance as we're fairly close right now. The last four hour higher low is 79.55 and 78.52 is support after that. So the only play for bears on these names at these po at this point is entering on a loss of the four hour uptrend or trying to top fish resistances that we are approaching. If you're top fishing, you're playing counter the trend and the risk of getting stopped out is high. But the risk in terms of what you're going to lose if you're stopping out on that higher high is not that high. It's small. Or if you're, again, just patiently waiting for the loss of the 4-hour uptrend, it's less risk and less reward for that play as a bear. BCHSV. So we were looking for a bounce, and I actually thought it would get uglier than this, to be honest. We did see a daily inside bar bull break. The 4-hour time frame leveled out. We hit the low of 53.78. We hit a bounce of 57.74, just a lower high. We held support, held support by four pennies, essentially a double bottom. Inside bar, inside bar, volume completely disappears. And we just got so tight that the bulls were able to see that break and cause some shorts to cover and see some significant follow through. So on this bounce, now we're looking for a daily lower high compared to 74.52, but the bulls have put a stop to the bleeding for now. So I was looking for things to get more extreme and get a more significant bounce. At this point in time, the bounce was about 15 to 18%. So still a very significant bounce off that low, but not as ugly as we would have anticipated. Still in a daily downtrend, so worth watching that. As long as it's in a daily downtrend, the bears obviously have that trend in their favor. So XRP, can t compared to the recent high, we're also way far away. We're not going to head to that level anytime soon, in my opinion, but we have broken the daily lower highs. So the last daily lower high was 3395. And now that we've broken it, that's step number one to changing the daily trend back in favor of the bulls. But to confirm it, we still need the day daily higher low and higher high follow through to confirm the trend change. So if we lose the four hour uptrend, which we're not even close to doing, we're about to set a four hour higher low anywhere above 323. But if we lose the four hour uptrend, we zoom out to the daily and we say, all right, now we have to form a daily higher low to try and change this daily trend. But as long as we have the four hour uptrend, the bulls are holding on to this bounce off of that recent low. ADA USDT, this one's worth watching just because it's so tight. We have a couple examples recently, BCHSV and Binance, which we're going to look at in just a second, where they got real tight and then saw a nice move. So as we're this tight, we certainly want to be watching for a volume spike 853 and 794. And this is one of those instances where using the alert system on the hourly or 15 minute time frame and watching for abnormal volume signals without price movement, or also putting on the bot radar and watching that bot radar going off, if they start to go off, that tells us that volatility is likely going to occur and we're about to see a break. So we have a range of 794 and 853. We've been within this range for the last seven days, similar to Litecoin with it's just sideways trading. Look how consistent the volume is. With this much consistency, it's going to be very clear when that pattern breaks. So if we're looking short-term levels, I'm looking at 8349 and 8394. And as far as support goes, it's 8159 and 8107. But more patient traders are going to use this daily time frame and just wait for the broader range to break or if they're conveniently close to the computer and they get an alert about a volume spike, that means the break is likely happening. Binance, this was just uh, pressure building up for the bulls and again, highlighted how it was a cup and handle pattern. The psychology was there. Again, not one that I would put in a textbook, but we have the resistance of $20, the pullback. We make it all the way back to resistance. We reject by 10 pennies. Healthy bull flag of consolidation, really just sideways trading, tighter, 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 clear bull break. And look at all these resistance levels clearing at once on the hourly time frame. Bull break was 1966, 1979, 1990, taking out all of those levels at once. And really nice continuation. Binance continues to be a leader in the cryptocurrency space for bulls. Our new support level, I'm looking at 
Really, the last daily high or low is 1625, but we do have a base of support now built in the 1920s, 1926. We're looking for a four hour higher low above 1926. Congrats to the bulls. This weekly chart just continues on fire, and it does look like Binance has all time highs in its site in 2019. So that's where we stand overall. We're keeping an eye on the four hour time frames for clarity on the majority of these names. Check out the free trial of the alert system, alerts.chartguys.com. I appreciate you watching. Hope you have a good holiday weekend. We'll check back in once we see a change on that four hour time frame to give us the odds shifting on what's going to happen on the daily charts. Hope you do some good things out there and we'll see you soon. So Adventure Time still in Lake Tahoe area and I decided to do one more trip through Yosemite. I think I've been four times at this point, but I was going through by myself and I had my buddy's jacket with me. So I set him up on a stick and he was hanging out with me. And just my little personal tent, nice little spot in Yosemite. Like the dichotomy of that shot with two trees, one living, one dead, pretty much growing from the same spot. And more really cool scenery. Big mountains, raging rivers of delicious water. All of this is, again, with a, at this point, a five-year-old, little, tiny, my first smartphone. But I am blown away by some of these pictures in terms of the quality. Great sunsets out there. This was on a fire tower on the top of a mountain after a hike. So from there, I flew back to Florida. And then from Florida, I did another road trip. And I drove up north. I forget if I had a, a buddy's wedding up north. I think that was it up in Massachusetts, where I'm from originally. So I drove from Florida up the coast and stopped in North Carolina again, went through the Smoky Mountains again. So some more Smoky Mountain shots. Certainly a lot of rain there in the spring and summer. That's why it's a thriving biodiverse area. And this was a hike where we were literally up in the cloud and that was a big ledge and a big cliff, but you wouldn't know it. Fly photo bomb. So from there, did some more exploring. So we'll go through another quickie road trip. Went through some areas that I don't usually travel through as far as up the East Coast. Normally when I was going up the East Coast, it was just driving from college back to Massachusetts. And sometimes I'd do those 14 hours in one sitting and I burned myself out in a big way. I can't do more than four hours right now without needing to sleep or stop driving, but 14 hours in a row, I was insane. So after this, we'll get into, I don't know, nature, planting stuff. I went and planted, transplanted some tomatoes today, watered up on the peas, got some dill transplants, put that in. I'm a big dill fan. Still need some cilantro and some basil. Still gotta plant some summer squash. So piecing it together slowly but surely as we approach May. And once we get to the end of April, that's pretty much when we're safe from frosts here in Western North Carolina. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Do good things.